Okay then my friends, so we've hooked up this form now so that it saves a new ninja record to the ninjas table when we submit it, as long as it passes those validation checks. If it doesn't pass those checks though, then we just get a complete form reload where the input fields are blank again and there's no error feedback. So it would be nice in this scenario if we could do two things. First of all, retain the input values when the form gets reloaded so we don't have to manually type them out again because that is a pain in the arse. And second, we want to show any validation errors at the bottom of the form so that a user knows what they need to correct. And we're going to do both of those things in this lesson. So currently, if we submit the form and the form data doesn't pass the validation checks in the controller function, then we just re-render the create view essentially from scratch. And that means we see the blank form again on the page. But when that happens, Laravel also passes any validation errors into the view, which we can check for and then conditionally render as well. And it does this by attaching them to an errors variable automatically accessible to us in the view. So what we could do is at the bottom of the form, check to see if that errors variable contains any errors. And if it does, then we can render those to the page. So we can do a little if check down here by saying at if and then opening parentheses. And inside that we can get the errors variable and use a method on it called any. And this method returns a Boolean, true or false, depending on whether we do have any errors attached to this variable. So if we do and it's true, then we can output those. First though, I also want to end the if check down here by using at end if and then inside this block, I'm going to use a UL tag to output those errors. And I'm also going to apply some Tailwind classes to this as well, just to make it look a little bit nicer. So just some padding, some margin, and also a background color of red, just so a user knows something's wrong. Anyway, there might be a single form error that we need to show, or there could be multiple errors. And on this errors variable, we get access to another method called all, which returns an array of all of those errors. So we could loop through those and output an li tag for each one, right? So let's do that. Let's say at for each and then parentheses. And then inside those, we'll say dollar sign errors and we'll use the all method to get all the errors and we'll refer to each one as dollar sign error. Let's also end the for each loop down here as well. And now inside this loop, we can add an li tag, which I'll apply a couple of Tailwind classes to again just to give it some space and also a red text color. And then for the li text, we can just output the single error. And that's all we need to do, my friends. Now let's save this and try it in a browser. All right, so let's try adding a new ninja called Mario and we'll give this a skill of 150, which is outside of the allowed bounds. It should be between zero and 100. So this should cause a validation error. Biography, blah. Again, this should cause a validation error because we said the minimum number of characters is going to be 20. And then we'll select Dojo and try adding the ninja. Hopefully, though, now we'll see the errors down here at the bottom, which we do. It says the skill field must be not greater than 100 and the bio field must be at least 20 characters. So this is awesome. This error text was generated for us based on our validation rules and it was passed back to the view, which we then output. Cool. So that's good, but I would still like to retain the old values inside these form fields so we don't have to write them out again. So then we can easily do this by using a built-in Laravel helper function called old, which retrieves the previous input values of a form from the session. So we could come to the name input at the top, for example, and we could add the value attribute to this. And we're going to set that equal to double curly braces. Now inside those, we're going to use the old function and we're going to pass in the name of the input field, which in this case is just name. So that grabs the previously submitted value for this name from the session and it outputs it right here as the input value. So that means when we see this in the browser, the input field will still be populated with the text a user just submitted, which is better. Now, if we just landed on this page and there was no previous submission, then this old function would just return null so the value would be empty and we'd see a blank form field. All right, so now let's come to the skill field and we're going to do the same thing. So we add the value attribute and then inside that we can use curly braces. Then we can use the old function again and this time we pass in the name skill. So now the skill input field is going to be retained when the validation fails and the form reloads. Next up, we've got the bio field, and this is a little bit different because it's a text area and text areas don't have a value attribute. However, 
what they do have is a closing tag and we can nest whatever text we want to show in the text area within the opening and closing tags so right here we can use double curly braces again then the old function and we pass in bio as an argument which is the name of this field all right, and then finally, we've got the select box for the dojo selection. And this one is a little bit trickier because the way we retain the user choice in this case is by adding the selected attribute to whatever option a user previously selected. And when an option has that selected attribute, it becomes the default selected option when the page loads. So then we need to dynamically add that selected attribute to a single option and the way we're going to do that is by using double curly braces directly inside the option tag. And then we'll do a ternary inside that to evaluate the old value of the dojo ID. And then we'll conditionally add the selected attribute if it matches the current dojo ID within this loop. Right? Does that make sense? So we can say dollar sign dojo. Then we'll grab the ID property of that. And we want to see if that is equal to the old function and we pass in the dojo underscore ID value, which is the name of the select field. Then we add a question mark for the ternary. And if that statement was true, then we can output the string selected. All right, then a colon followed by just an empty string for if it's not true. All right, so now only the previously selected option will have that selected attribute. All right then, so let's give this a whirl. I'm going to say Mario, Ninja Skill, 150, Biography, Blah, and then a Dojo, which is this one here, which I can't pronounce. Let's create that, and we should see now we get these errors, awesome, but this time all of the fields have retained their old previous values, including the Dojo as well. That's awesome. So let's change these. We'll change Mario to 90. And then we'll say right here, it's a me, Mario. I think that should be enough. 20 characters. Let's just add a bunch of these on just in case. All right. So let's create the ninja. And cool. Yeah, now we can see Mario has been added. Awesome. 